with the latest and greatest, most finished DLC expansion, Odyssey, Elite Dangerous is seeing a major redesign on some of its UIs, and that user experience has left people with some opinions. Well, for at least the next three weeks, developers asked the community to provide feedback on those UIs, and boy, do I have opinions and feedback! Now, considering that this new UI will be transplanted to the rest of the players who didn't buy Odyssey, I feel that it's very important that developers learn from their major test 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 mistake ever. So, without waffling like an average Brit, let's tear this thing apart! Let's then start off with the positives, cause a good shit sandwich needs a positive stroking so that little gentle children don't run away at the first sign of a ward CUNT MUFFIN! Now, oh, well, whoops. So the galaxy map coming from Horizons has changed quite a bit, and there are positives. On the first glance, yes, it seems to be less cluttered, but that's a double-edged sword here. No, the real positive, in my opinion, truly is the improvements made to the galaxy search. The only problem is that this search is so basic that it only searches for the systems that start with what you wrote in. So let's say if you wrote in Lighthouse, well, you won't be finding Jackson's Lighthouse. I mean seriously, this is literally the second day of learning SQL queries in programming school levels of oversight. Still, it is a better version of the old UI. And the other positive of this new UI is copy system name button. Yes, it's a simple little button with one function and it does it great. No, seriously, it is a proper positive. As for the negatives, well, everything else. I saw this design language appear during the Beyond series two years back for the game, and it seems the Frontier continues to move on this path to make everything into icons. On the first glance, icon-based UIs are pretty neat and help visualize and beautify the whole thing. However, what sometimes happens is that your UI designer is let off the leash too much and starts turning everything into icons. For fuck's sakes, have none of you learned from the absolute basics? You have computers right? Everyone has computers. They have Windows, Linux, Macintosh, including Android and iOS phones. Have not taught any of you how to do it, right? Well, okay, my point is that icons by themselves are confusing as fuck. It needs text visible at all times to explain what it is. Only in cars and road signs we have seen icon-based design without accompanying words working. And that's only because it's easier for the fast movement and thanks to cultural learning. I truly dread to be in the shoes of someone who tries to explain their friend how the galaxy map works. Okay, so you open a galaxy map, then click on the bubble line icon. Hey, what? A what now? Simple, a bubble line icon, not the line bubble icon. A what? Do you understand what I'm saying? A bubble line icon. Uh, what? Say what again, motherfucker? I dare you. I double fucking dare you. Oh, okay, okay, jeez. <laughs> yeah, about that much. And the thing is, today I made sure to never rely on muscle memory every player has gained over the time using the old UI as an argument at all. I'm trying to look at this as objectively as possible, but the galaxy map frankly is so disappointing that only someone who looked at it without touching it or using it could have ever approved it. And because of that, a question of have you ever played Elite Dangerous becomes a question we ask the developers. And by all logic, we shouldn't ask that, but here we are. And of course, there's the fact that it's more broken than the actual old version. Like, for example, that bookmark removal button no longer exists. And to my knowledge, it's the only contribution that my videos have had on the game, according to developers themselves, at least as far as I know. But if we touch on bookmarks, does it not seem weird that this game with procedurally generated universe with over 400 billion star systems and even more celestial bodies within them only allows 128 bookmarks. <laughs> if that doesn't sound pathetic, then I don't know what is. Then, of course, recalculation of your route needs to be separate button for some reason, which would be nice to have a toggle automatic recalculation for the route, but 
it doesn't. So every time you swap a ship or even change a route algorithm from economy to fastest or vice versa, you'll need to replot that route or find that stupid button and click it. Now, there are, of course, are other issues, but generally speaking, biggest issue is the design overall. It's a bad idea, no matter who you ask, to switch to icon-based design. Please, learn from the years of studies and practice by others, by those whose operating systems you're using even right now, for holy shit's sake. So, what's my suggestion? Well, obviously, do not port this new UI in any shape or form to Horizons. Bring back the old menu, just polish it up and add those two good positives that I mentioned, plus more bookmarks. Oh, and hopefully you haven't gotten bored of this particular sentence, because this is basically the general consensus of today. Then moving on to the station menu. Now this is very similar to the fleet carrier design that we got a little while back with the release of fleet carriers. And again, in some places we do see the dreaded icon design without text. So again, no, paid, no, paid to learn from the industry, you fool. Otherwise, it's probably the most positive of today's UI subjects, as it's a bit more interactive feeling than the old one, and maybe a few boxes need repositioning and reshaping. However, this is just a skin for the old UI. It adds nothing or removes anything. And this is where kind of the problem lies. You see, back in the day, people complained that the ship repairs cost too much, so developers split repairing your ship into two separate parts. Overall repair? and integrity repairs. Maybe you're new and you didn't know this, but your ship loses integrity, sort of like cracks in the armor, every time you take damage. And while you may still see that 100% hull health, if you haven't repaired your integrity of the ship, you take extra damage. In fact, ship with integrity at 0% receives about 30% more damage to overall hull health. Or you can simply think of it as having 70% of actual health, even though the ship says 100%. Now, as to how to fix it, well, you need to head to Advanced Maintenance, and herein lies the problem. In this ill-conceived menu called Advanced Maintenance, you find all sorts of things that should be right next to quick access services like refuel and repair. Like, for example, buying limpets so that you never forget picking them up, nor paint fixing and others. Basically put, it was a perfect time to get rid of Advanced Maintenance Overall, it's old and it's empty and only houses features that the UI designers of old could not place anywhere else. And so it ended up looking like this. A complete empty void of nothingness and pointlessness. This is bad design in the old one. Now then let's take a moment and look at the new outfitting screen and menus there. It's slightly different approach than the galaxy map, but... oh. Oh, here we go again. Frankly speaking, if Galaxy Map was a confusing mess to explain to someone while still being functional, outfitting UI has been literally molested. On one hand, it seems to try and compartmentalize it for some weird reason, trying to bring in fresh ideas, I guess. But on the other hand, completely porting over old and bloated archaic aspects like having multiple hull reinforcement sections for no fucking reason. Having experimental weapons section that looks like your hoarder aunt's shed. Having so many limpid controllers, I think my brain is gonna commit Sudoku. So, what are the biggest issues, and are there any positives? Uh, positives? Uh, none. Well, okay, maybe category buttons for stored modules, but none that stand out as clear improvements that somebody who actually would have had played the game or listened to the community would have made thanks to such feedback. Kinda makes you think, doesn't it? But as for the negatives, well, number one for me would be the fact that equipping modules from storage is an absolute mess and the result of someone's first user interface, not from a seasoned professional. There are additional extra menus and clicks that you need to just perform to swap or store something. Like, for example, you click on storage, then click on whatever part you want to put in, then click on equip module, then you select a port you want to use, then click on equip again. Oh, and look at that, if you have equipped a weapon or a utility, you still need to wait until the fucking part packs in. And in this time, you can't do anything. 
In fact, I asked developers back in the day if this was a bug to be locked out while the previous module is packing in, or was that intended wasting of your time? And they said that it was a bug, and it's still not being fixed. For crying out loud, did no one notice this fucking bug since the launch of the game? Oh, and once you have equipped a module from the storage, you need to back out completely to the start and begin again to equip another module. Who designed this clicking mess? Now, the number two is the placement of those buttons. Take thrusters, for example. Why are there two columns of the modules? Why is the grade represented outside of selection by a number like it should, yet when selecting a module, it's in dots? Why? And then on top of it, why? Why? Why do we see other modules from other hard points or utility points that we have equipped on our ship when you have already selected this hard point or utility point? God fucking damn it, this bizarre design. Then number three is basically shared with number one as well, and that's just menu after menu after menu after menu, 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 and more menus and more menus, 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 all the menus, god damn it. And that is compared to the old system. Number four would be the fact that they did not restructure the module selection. Have you seen how much extra shit has the game gotten since Horizons? Have you looked at the mess that the experimental personal narrative weapon selection is? Oh, and number five, just for the extra, provide all the stats for all the items in a big list with standardized info sheet. Damn it. Now we come to the ship's screens, and oh fuck me where to start. Yes, visually on the first glance it's more, more than the monochromatic stylized selector before. Fine, be that way, but why did you remove information? Yes, Frontier UI designers removed any and all information about the internal modules that the ship has. Jesus guys, do you know how small the module storage still is? And where do you think people put those extra modules that they have engineered after that's full? That's right, in ships, and most of those are the same type of a ship, so now tell me. How could anyone who actually has played this game and has grinded it like average player would tell which of their ships has which parts, especially if you have module storage ships? I simply cannot understand the depths of decision making for the people who think that this is better. And that's the thing, let's say Odyssey worked 100%, like they sold it to us. These design decisions would still be around, and that worries me. This is not better, this is just stupid. If this comes to Horizons, I frankly don't know what I'm gonna do myself, and I don't have any storage ships, and I'm certainly not gonna try and memorize 100 modules that reside God knows where. If I wouldn't know better, I would say that this is almost a straight up downgrade. So in the very unlikely case that any developer is watching, put back the old version, damn it! And finally we come to the user interfaces for the leg people. Actually, you know what? I'll tell you a story. I first booted up the Odyssey Alpha for the first time and walked around and talked with some of those NPC people and while well, the NPC and bartender menus are functional, they're okay at best. Then I tried one of those terminals and holy shit, why can't you just simply copy that other guy? Y you know that other guy frontier that 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 citizen guy why when i interact with the terminals on off angle all of a sudden i can't reposition myself to get a better angle or the game doesn't do it for me instead now i have to look at the damn terminal from a really cumbersome angle lovely Seriously, this UI menu was perfected by Doom 3, yes, the shittiest one, however, the UI computer feature was one of the best features of the whole thing. Why did you not learn from the industry? It would have been so much cooler if we had that kind of a thing. And the story didn't end there. You see, my heart skipped a beat in disappointment and sorrow. You know how Elite Dangerous, even in my own words, was such a forward-looking and immersion-creating thing with its user interface and intuitive design when it released. However, today, when I walk up to a lift, I see a non-in-game menu pop-up. 
not a physical in-game button press, not even an in-game context menu like with the ships. <sighs> My heart broke, and it's such a step backwards. Elite always went for immersion for me, and now seeing this new design on ships and legs going back to those sad and intrusive full-screen menus and pop-ups, even those pressure chambers are automatic, and again, I go back to Doom 3 with incredible immersive UI. Same with Dead space, and partly this design can be seen in, yes, Star Citizen. But hey, a good fucking idea is a good fucking idea, no matter who makes it. So copy it, or improve upon it. It simply feels a little, uh, sorry, I mean a lot, that with the legs they're trying to take shortcuts where in reality it doesn't take that much more time to actually develop real buttons working as buttons in game space, as well as other things, like the terminal stuff for example. Why did you bother with that in the first place? Why just not make it a whole pop-up screen like you did before? Like with the lifts and other parts of the game, was that a feature that managed to get in this cut-down version of a or what's the deal? As for the other UIs for their feet, well, we need velocity meters for our suits, like with SRV, so that we can tell whether or not we can survive a fall without the use, or with the use, of jetpacks. But still, then we come to the actual issue, the round menus, and Jesus fucked in the ass Christ. Who thought that we needed two real menus? So first one, the quick access menu for grenades, shields and etc. This one actually could be acceptable and pretty cool if the mouse would work with it properly. But after several changes, it's still a mess when it comes to selecting anything. Please, go play Doom, that is Doom 2016 or Eternal, and learn how to code this shit right. Cause right now, the quick access menu is very slow access. I thought that no one could screw up this feature's usability, but Frontier proves us wrong again. Oh, and most people will bind this wheel menu to their mouse, you know, so that you can use it when you actually need it, most likely to the mouse wheel itself. You know, to the tool that is handy to use for the quick access menu, right? Even on controllers, it makes no sense having this wheel menu on the screen appear on the opposite side of the screen. So put it on the right. Again, Doom. Learn from the fucking Doom, dammit. As for the other wheel menu, just why? Just why? Why is it a wheel? Oh, right, it's because of the fucking console controllers. Okay, fine. Even so, do you really think that it's easy or quick to use this small, little wheel on one of the corners of the screen? Seriously! Isn't this like the main menu for the space legs? And it's a small thing in a corner. Again, your peers frontier, your peers let alone the industry has shown a better way of doing these things in multiple ways, so why in the gods names you have chosen to make it a small fucking wheel in a corner? A PDA tablet or a holo watch or just something that would show up also as a character animation for others to see that you're using it's something, but no, a small mostly pointless and hard to see wheel. And do you know how I use it? It's so unusable that I had to map it to one of the F keys and then use my other hand from the mouse to use the arrow keys to just select something on it. This is so sad and depressing I frankly don't know how could this menu could be any worse, both visually and functionally. But that's about it without too much nitpicking on the new UI. There are numerous nitpicks of course for the colors, detail, placements and blah 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 that I could get into, but let's just start with the basics. Maybe one day this will change and improve, not downgrade like it is right now. Ah, but who am I kidding? I really dread to think that this UI will be coming to everyone and ruin it for everyone. I really think that outfitting and galaxy map has the power to do it on their own, but hey, who knows? If you do take away one of those American stylized sentences from this whole scripted video, then it would be this. Do not port this new UI to the rest of the game and bring back the old UI to Odyssey. But for now, that's about it for me. 
still, however, do let me know if I missed any UI issues or maybe something that I did not mention in the positives. Regardless, if you enjoy my work and want to help out, do check out the Patreon link down below or maybe if a cool shirt is your game, do check out the 100,000 subscriber special design I made and maybe pick it up. All the links are down below as the other useful things are. As for me, now I'm off to cry in a corner about the incoming changes. Gods help us all.